Oh, yeah, we are, folks, freaking at the Freakers Ball right here live on reallibertymedia.com on this Friday night, March the 1st, 2019. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole new month. We're three, it's the end of the third month, not three months in, but uh, two months have gone by, and and we're on three months into 2019. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, I, I don't, uh, I'm not sure Moose Girl is going to be around uh, tonight. If she is, it'll be towards the end. She's She's got some kind of thing going on. I don't know exactly what that thing is, but you got me, but it's still the Freaker's Ball. Because, uh, well, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> anyway, uh, if, you, if you're here on reallibertymedia.com on the show page, uh, then you're in the right spot there. You got the video, you got the chat, you got everything right there. If you're on the audio stream, well, welcome to you all as well, and you can be there on many, many places, whether that be on uh, freedomsnetwork.com, realliberty.org, uh, tune in, internet radio, uh, other places out there the stream goes to. So if you're on there, I, I would suggest you come on over to, to the show page and watch from there, chat on here in the chat, but that's up to you, Ben, that's up to you. Um, you can still go balls to the wall on Freakers, Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> by the way, our our uh, uh, annual donation drive is officially over, and uh, we did well. We did we did fine. Uh, we, we we got more than than was required by by enough. So I, I'm very happy with it. And by the way, sock puppet, thank you very much for your donation. Um, and everybody else that donated throughout the month. Uh, I, I just mentioned Sock because his just recently came in. Uh, anyway, but uh, yeah, all the other people that donated uh, before the month started and during the month, uh, it, it it really helps uh, keep us up and going, and uh, we we needed it. So thank you all very much, and we'll see you for more of that next February. But uh, you know, donate anytime you want, really. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh anyway, so uh I don't know what all is going on uh, yet tonight here, but uh, uh we 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 got a show and uh let's see we heard uh what did we hear earlier today? Oh yeah, Vinny did his show earlier today and Grammy did her show today, so uh, yeah, that, that, that's all great great stuff. And anybody that uh may be thinking about a show and and I I've, I've heard some little kind of clues there in the chat uh, from certain people that maybe, maybe they might want to do a show or might know some other people that want to do a show and uh, so that, uh, just let me know man, yeah I'll, I'll get you get get you set up and going here, that's right Cyborg Noodle <laughs> oh by the way, well, let me say hi to all the folks over here in the chat room right now, we got the barman he's, he's my, my, my old bot, my favorite bot He's, he's been around for years. We got Cowboy Tech getting myself and uh, the Mighty Moose girl, uh, who's just BBLing us. See you, see you, Moose. Uh, we got Miss Kate and DC. Uh, we got Anti and Asmo and Shell Sedona. Mr. Flash Somebody. Uh, Graham Z. Yes, indeed, the wonderful Graham Z. <laughs> Benoit, Benoit is here in the chat. He says, with just a small donation, we can build a chat room wall. <laughs> uh, funny man, funny man. Uh, anyway, where, where are we at? We got the real IB Don. See, we got Mr. Meister Brow, Mr. Woody. There, we got Rain and Rob Works and Rome's and Arlen Fluke is now known as uh, Vanna White. That's right. Uh, Grammy had uh, uh, made a comment some time back ago that uh, that's the fluke bot, which compliments and does other things uh, than Barman, uh, was, was the Vanna White of RLM. And I, 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 I never really did anything with it, but then tonight I, I, I decided I'd go ahead and register a new nick, and Vanna White was still available so I registered at Vanna White, and so Fluke is now officially uh, Vanna White. You know, I, I always had a thing for Vanna. <laughs> I always dug Vanna, 
Uh, don't ask me why. Well, I mean, I guess it's pretty obvious she's, she's, a, she's a hot chick. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I always liked her. Uh, a- anyway, um, <laughs> we got the Phantom. We got, and well then, of course, and Beetle and Benoit, Mr. Cyborg Noodle, who's a pseudo-bot, half-bot, half-human. All right. Uh, we got Dakota and Frumpy and and uh, the, the, the Gromit and Java Doctor and JJ's and Kozu and Kiss and Ninja Dubois and Pwn Sauce, which is another bot, I guess. Yeah, Sock Puppet. Tech Man. I, I'm, I'm still not sure who Tech Man is, but he's been hanging around. And we got the Uno bot, which uh, is all only there for people to play Uno, which is apparently a card game of some description that I'm unfamiliar with. And we got Vinny Spooner. And I don't know if that's a Lysander thing or a uh, Spoon Man thing as he was playing the spoons today on his show. Yeah, Vinny, playing the spoons for us uh, with some, some redneck music going on in the background there. Just wonderful stuff. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. So, Pone Sauce is Sox ZNC. All right, that, that's cool. Um did I have something else to say? Oh, I'm sure I got plenty to say. But we're going to kick it off with some jams here. And, and, and I, say, I said I said at the beginning, at the top, if you all remember, that it, it is a freaker's ball. But, uh, you know, generally when I'm just here by my, my, by, by my lonesome, uh, you, you're, you're going to get a little extra. You're going you're gonna to get something more. <laughs> so here it is. Joe Satriani. Yeah, Jesus built my car. It's a love affair. Mainly Jesus and my hot rod. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, man. Jesus and my hot rod. Ministry. Jesus built my hot rod. Ding a ding dang my dang long ling long. Yes indeed. Before that well we had uh, John Five and the creatures. In case you don't know John Five, he's the uh Rob Zombies guitarist there. Anyway, you're doing crank it, motherfucker. Yes, indeed. And we kicked it off with Joe Sautry and Honey, and I Just Want to Rock, live in Paris. Uh, that 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 song, um, I don't know how old that song is, but but the uh, that video was released on, in uh, 2010, so um, I don't know what album that, that song is on. Anyway. <laughs> he, he does have a live album with it on it. But I don't know if he's got it, he's on a studio album there yet with that or not. Or yet, I'm sure, you know, if it was going to be out by on one, it, it, it's out already. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that stuff will get your blood a-pumping. Yeah. <laughs> At least I would hope so. Uh, if, that, if that kind of music don't get your blood pumping, I, I, I can't imagine what will. I just, it just it doesn't make any sense. Don't make no sense. If that's, if that's not working for you, you know. <laughs> Oh man! Of course I do. You know I I like my 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 rock and roll. Some people... Hey, quiet there, John Lee. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, some people don't like that kind of music, I, and I, I never did figure out why. Uh, but uh, you know, that's me. What do I know? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh, you're one of those, are you? All right, well, we'll slide you over here. We can do it in that order. All right, that'll work. All right, so, what the hell's going on out here in the world? Well, we got like uh, two, three weeks, three weeks left, three weeks before spring is official. However, apparently there's going to be a massive cold snap. Uh, coming down through, uh, well, Moose Girls area, and then uh, I, I supposed to, to cover most of the country. I don't have a story about it or nothing, but, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's going to be coming up this coming week here, so I'm sure Moose Girl will be ever so happy with all of that. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. So uh, let's, let's let's kick it off with with a, with a, with a, with a tale here, a story that I do believe uh, Rob Works posted in the chat earlier. 
today. It could have been somebody else, but I'm pretty sure it was Rob Works that, that did do this particular posting. Oop, oop, I went too far. Uh, yeah, you don't know what I'm talking about because I'm, I'm just talking to myself, but um, yeah. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Uh, yeah, anyway, so this is from the New York Post. And I thought, wait the hell a minute. I, I don't I don't I don't feel like a criminal. <laughs> but maybe I am. Oh boy. Uh anyway, New York Post here. Uh Ron Bailey Mulatto uh, whatever. Uh believing a conspiracy theories might make you a criminal. But wait. I I I I believe in almost all of them. Well, to some degree or another. <laughs> but but they but they start off the article talking about being a birther, which I, I was never a birther. I because I, I just didn't care. If I would have looked into uh the Obama situation, I might have been a birther, but I didn't care. So I was not a birther. And I laughed at those that were. <laughs> anyway, here it is. Go figure. If you're a birther or a 9-11 denier, well, I don't deny 9-11 happened. I just deny that they that I've been told the truth about it. Anyway, chances are you aren't much fun to be around. And again, I have to disagree. I'm a ton of fun to be around. Sure, we've been saying this about our whack job uncle for years. Now, I, I, I do have a couple of nieces, so I suppose I could be the whack job uncle. <laughs> but now it's backed up by science. Yeah, conspiracies, uh, believing in, in the conspiracies is the norm. Uh, and those that believe in, in the government line are the consuls of the world. Ugh, can't, they just can't be helped. Anyway... People who buy into outrageous conspiracy theories, of course, they don't define the, the uh, meaning of the word outrageous here, or conspiracy theories for that matter, uh, say that no human has ever walked on the moon. Well, I don't know if no human has ever walked on the moon. I just know that uh, the, the 1969 moon landing was a load of crap. Uh, or... The ancient pyramids were built by aliens. Of course they were. And <laughs> more inclined to actively engage in antisocial behavior. Eh, well, you got me on that one. Um, <laughs> antisocial behavior, if that means not being uh, sociable in, in general with the public, then yes, you got me. Eh. That's about that's that's the that's the extent of it there though. Anyway, that's the main finding of a team of psychologists from the UK's Staffordshire University and the University of Kent who investigated the wider impact of these paranoia fueled fringe beliefs can have on behavior. It's not paranoia. You, and you look at the facts and, and, and you weigh the story you're being being told. It's not paranoia. Those people are lying. There's no paranoia needed. Or, uh, eh, whatever. So, anyway, um, their research, uh, our research, according to the article, has shown for the first time in the role that conspiracy theories can play in determining an individual's, uh, at least at, at this point, we can be an individual. Hooray for that. Okay, <laughs> determining an individual's attitude toward everyday crime. What? What? <laughs> Nonsense. Uh, study co-author and Kent professor Karen Douglas said in a statement, it demonstrates that people subscribing to the view that others have conspired might be more inclined towards unethical actions. No, we're more inclined to point out unethical actions of those that are doing the conspiracies. We are pointing them out, and you say it's not true, so it's a theory, so it's a conspiracy theory. Anyway, 
with the contemporary conspiracy theories targeting everything from myths surrounding the Mueller report. I know nothing about that. All I know is it's just a stupid puppet show. Uh, to the chilling secret behind Disney's Frozen? Again, lost. Totally lost. I have no idea what anything about Disney's Frozen. Uh, the cultural phenomenon is certainly ripe for clinical exploration. As such, the new study measured participants' belief in the general notions of conspiracy. Yeah, I believe in conspiracies. Conspiracies are proven all the time. Anyway, as well as how much they agreed with specific theories. As in, there was an official campaign by MI6 to assassinate Princess Diana. Isn't that been proven? Isn't it was wasn't wasn't that proven that that, that it happened? That MI6 had had a campaign to kill her because they were embarrassed by her. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's true. Anyway, those inclined to believe in theories were more accepting of everyday crime. Really, such as demanding a refund refund for no appropriate reason. What? A refund? How's that a crime? Demanding a refund. I, I, how, <laughs> where's the crime in that? In addition, exposure to conspiracy theories was found to make people more apt to engage in low-level criminal activity. If you mean exposing the, the crimes of those conspirators, okay, uh, you want to call that a crime because I'm exposing the truth? Then fine, I'm a criminal. I'm the worst kind of person. Anyway, researchers found that the tendency was directly linked to an individual's feeling of a lack of social cohesion or shared values known as anami, anomi, A-N-O-M-I-E, anami, I don't know. Um, again, just, just nonsense, just total crap uh, that, that, that they're spewing here. Uh, for for the non psycholinguists out there, anomi anomi is defined as the lack of usual social or ethical standards in an individual or group. Uh, I'm 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 absolutely totally ethical, and I don't know what your usual social or ethical standards are. I probably don't share them, and you are probably not ethical. <laughs> author of this thing here. As the co-author, Dan Jolly of Staffordshire put it, people believing in conspiracy theories are more likely to be accepting of everyday crime. No, I'm not, I'm not fine with people uh, stealing from each other, shooting each other, uh, causing other violence upon each other. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not accepting of that, but I think you're talking about everyday crime as the, uh, no, no, uh, no, <laughs> no victim things. Uh, and yes, I'm perfectly fine with the no victim things. Anyway, while exposure to theories increases a feeling of anami, which in turn predicts increased future everyday crime intentions. What? <laughs> it makes absolutely no sense. I don't know what they're talking about. Oh, but it's absolute nonsense, bullshit, load of crap stuff there coming to you from the New York Post, which, what else would you really expect from them? You know? You damn conspiracy theorist criminals! <laughs> oh, man, I tell you... <laughs> Uh, we'll skip that one for now. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, let's talk about this a little bit. I don't, I don't know that much about it, but we're going to talk about it a little bit. Exactly, my brow. Fuck them. Uh, anyway, from the Daily Mail, uh, there was a a thing over there in uh, Pakistan last night. Was it? I think maybe the day before. Um, where where India came swooping in with planes and and bombed some crap over there in Pakistan. And Pakistan's not happy about it. 
So this article came here from the DailyMail.com, or the, not? It says .com, but it's .co.uk. I don't, I don't know why it says .com in the header. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, Pakistan alludes to its nuclear weapons. It was today. The article is dated February 26. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, pa Pakistan alludes to its nuclear weapons as it warns India its top military chiefs uh, who authorize use of nukes are meeting to discuss the response to the bombing raid. I, I don't know that there's been a response as yet. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, Pakistan military chiefs meeting to discuss response to the bombing raid by India. Military spokesman alluded to a nuclear arsenal. Y'all know what that means. New Delhi claims a very large number of militants have been killed in airstrikes. Were they militants before you started bombing them or just after? Oh, I don't know about a dogfight. All right. Airstrikes took place in Pakistani territory and targeted what? Jaish e Muhammad? Okay. A uh, group cl had claimed responsibility for the suicide attack on troops in Indian Kashmir. Kashmir is split up into two separate areas. One belonged to India or claimed by India, and the other claimed by Pakistan. Uh, just leave Kashmir alone. Leave Kashmir out of this, but they've always been kind of the, the, the one, one of the major sore spots between India and Pakistan there. Anyway, Pakistan President Alvi, Alvi, <laughs> uh, told uh, today warned against brinkmanship that can lead to war. Uh, PM Imran Khan has dismissed India's self-serving, reckless, and fictitious claims. So I, I don't know what's going to go on with this here, um, as far as all that goes uh, over there. But uh, let's just hope uh, Pakistan's cooler about this than India's been, because that that was just not right by India for them to do what they did. Um, but it, like, it, it won't take much. Those two have, have been at each other's throats for a long, long time. And so it's not really going to take a whole lot uh, to, to, to spark something serious between them. And they are both nuclear armed. So that could be bad. That could be really bad. But uh, even if it is, uh, hopefully it just stays over there. Uh, and and with it between those two, of course, no, the U.S. will have to stick its nose in. It's big, overblown, oversized nose in there. So, uh, you know, it, it, uh, let's just hope nothing happens and, and that they can talk through this somehow or another. Uh, it's, it's not it's not good. I, I, I don't I don't want to see any kind of wars going on like that there. I mean, they got enough shit going on over there already with all the crap the United States is doing over there in Afghanistan. Uh, so... Yeah. Oh, okay. So apparently, uh, Rob Works has a link here to a, another thing, a alleged dogfight between India and Pakistani fighters. Uh, it's an alleged dogfight, which means maybe not a real dogfight. I, I don't know. Um, let's see what this is on Sputnik here. And this was uh, today? Yep. Yep, March 1st. Okay. So it says here... Uh, the footage comes as India's top brass confirmed on Wednesday that a Pakistani Air Force F-16, gee, I wonder where they got that, uh, fighter was downed during a dogfight with Indian Air Force jets. Uh, what, what is India flying? Are they also flying F-16s? Um, over the line of control in Kashmir earlier that day, despite Pakistan's claims that it hadn't lost any aircraft. Uh, Indian journalist A.J. Jandal, whatever, has posted a video on Twitter of the alleged dogfight between uh, India and Pakistan warplanes over Kashmir, uh, which he claims shows the pilot in the Pakistani F-16 parachuting to the ground. The authenticity of the video has not yet been confirmed by India or Pakistan. Now, here's the question uh, now, uh, that I think is probably... Uh, the more most important question here is uh, because 
the United States, being the big bully of the world, the big tyrant of the world, uh, the big war maker of the world, is supposedly friends with both Pakistan and India. So if two of their friends get into a, a mess, which one will they side with? You can't really side with both, can you? Although you probably armed them all both, arm, armed both of them, armed them all both. Yeah, armed both of them. Um, it it, uh, it 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 seems like it could be a problem for the U.S. Oh, okay. Here it says the uh, Indian uh, pilot was a MiG twenty one, so he, they got a Russian ship there, and while while the uh, Pakistanis have the U.S. F sixteen. <laughs> All right, so I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know nothing about this other than this this article, this link he just provided me here. So uh, yeah. Um. All right. All right. Just uh, cool your jets, and I mean that in a serious way, over there, boys, because uh, this is not good, and we don't want it. We want no part of it. All right, uh, just jumping around here, finding whatever articles come up in the list, uh, however they come up in the list. Um, th this is an article uh, about Kansas, the state of Kansas. And we are not in Kansas, but Grammy is. So uh, the state Supreme Court rules mandatory DUI tests are unconstitutional. This is on the freethoughtproject.com. Yep. On Friday, wait, that's not from today. Is this last Friday? February 27th. It must have been last Friday. All right. Um, on Friday, the Kansas Supreme Court ruled the state's DUI testing refusal law unconstitutional, uh, setting a remarkable precedent concerned, concerning forced testing of those suspected of driving under the influence. In a 6-1 to one ruling, the court decided the state's law, which had uh, made it a crime to refuse a breathalyzer or blood alcohol test without a court-ordered warrant, warrant, is excessive punishment. Those tests, the court found, amounted to searches, and the Kansas law punishes people for exercising their constitutional right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. In essence, the state's reasons are not good enough and its law not precise enough to encroach on the fundamental liberty interest in avoiding an unreasonable search, wrote Justice Maria Luckert. Thank you for that there. Uh, thank you for that, yes. All right, according to Kansas law, uh, the act of operating a motor vehicle gives implied consent. <laughs> The, the act of operating a motor vehicle gives implied consent. Oh, these fucking assholes. I, I, I hate them. Uh, anyway, for breath, blood, or urine test to prove one's sobriety. So there you are. You are guilty by the act of operating a motor vehicle until you prove yourself otherwise. But the Supreme Court ruled the state's constitution allows for the withdrawal of consent without punishment for doing so. Previously, refusing a sobriety test qualified as a misdemeanor publishable, pu punishable by up to one year in jail and a fine of, less than no, of no less than $1,250. Once a suspect withdraws consent, whether it be co consent, express consent, or implied under the statute, a search based on that consent cannot proceed, the court decided. So, good. According to the court, the state's compelling interest to combat impaired driving and to prosecute cases of DUI does not trump people's fundamental individual liberties as protected by the Constitution. Now, I don't really necessarily agree with all of their reasoning and such here, but it's still a good thing that that, that they did this. Uh, I, I don't know how that will bode for, uh, like, Texas and the no-refusal weekends and shit like that. Um, but, 
hey, whatever whatever it takes to get it done, you know? Um, remove that crap. So I, I'm sure the, the weasel lawyers will uh, find some way to come back against that because they love that kind of crap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Go back to some music here. Wait a second, let me see what the comment here in the chat is. Uh, and well then says, I can't wait till self-driving cars will have built-in breathalyzers. It will just take you to jail after locking the doors. Now, you know, you know, one of the things about the uh, self-driving cars, it was a, a few weeks back, maybe a month ago or so, I don't know. Anyway, um, some guy, he was asleep in his self-driving car. And the car crashed into something or hurt somebody or, or whatever. But he wasn't driving. He wasn't even in the freaking driver's seat. And and they they still found him liable because he was in the car. And he, they say, he should have taken control of the car. Which, come on. <laughs> That's kind of the point of a self-driving car is so you don't have to take control of the car. Um, and, 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 you know, maybe they, they want to make some of those self-drivers without the ability for a person inside the car to actually take over the car. I think that would be the way to go. But, you know, what do I know? Who the hell am I? I'm just a conspiracy theorist, and I like crimes. <laughs> All right, here's some music for you. No, you didn't. <laughs> how, 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 how. Uh, John Lee Hooker, boom, boom, from the Blues Brothers film there. It's requested by Ms. Kate. Thank you for that. Very much. I enjoyed that. Uh, before that, Dickie Betts. And wh what is it called here is the greatest guitar solo of all time. I'm not sure if they mean it's Dickie Betts, uh, greatest guitar solo of all time, or the greatest guitar solo of all time. Now, granted, it's an excellent, excellent guitar solo. Uh, however, not the greatest guitar solo of all time, and probably not even Dickie Betts' best of all time, but still very nice. And uh, whoever requested that, thank you. And we kicked it off there with a Rob Works request. Uh, Poker Face, Grassolina. Yeah, the 420 tribute. So, excellent, 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 excellent. I thoroughly enjoyed all of those various tunages in that particular request, all requests set. And, uh, yeah. Dig it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, so, anybody got any good uh, plans coming up for the weekend now that it's getting, well, well, I, I was going to say down it's getting a little warmer, but apparently that's not going to be the case, so I, I'm not really sure uh, what, what the situation is there with that. But anyway, still, you got any cool plans out there in the, in, in the wide world for, for this particular weekend? You be quiet. You be quiet over there. All right. Um, what is this? Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> Oh, man, so, uh, yeah, barman, yay, time to get your freak on. Thank you, Graham, for that, for that, for that, uh, tweet. So, yeah, these are good, these are good, that's good, that's all looking good. Okay, 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 so, uh, nobody answered me. All right, I don't know. All good plans involve bacon. <laughs> all right, all right, man. <laughs> man, I got this, uh, I bought this uh, barbecue sauce at the store last time I was over there, and uh, it's a, a honey honey barbecue sauce, and, and and I used it on some chicken that I made this week, and whew, that's some good shit, man. I can't I don't remember what brand it is offhand. I'd have to go look, but let me tell you, that was some that some that was some good tasty ass barbecue sauce. Sticky, messy, to be sure. But, uh, yeah, that was, um, 
Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about something disgusting here. Uh, once again, from the Free Thought Project. And it is. It's just absolutely disgusting, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. This is posted by Matt Agarist on February 26th. Study finds nearly half of child and adult sex trafficking victims were abused by police. To uh, protect and serve? Yeah, not so much. Not so much at all. That's right, a shocking new report. Well, I'm not really surprised by it. I'm not shocked by it. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it's coming out, so whatever. A shocking new report from the Hawaii State Commission on the status of women paints a disturbing picture of law enforcement and their role in sex trafficking. The report found that instead of preventing child and adult sex trafficking, many police officers, they call them here, are participating in it. The report is titled Sex Trafficking in Hawaii, uh, The Stories of Survivors, uh, which detailed the testimonials from multiple victims. One particularly disturbing part of the report was the fact that almost half of all the victims interviewed reported that police officers participated in their abuse and victimization. And well then points out that CPS should be known as Child Perversion Services. And I think that might actually be a bit kind. But uh, there it is. The corruption of members of the criminal justice system... What? The corruption of members of the criminal justice system reported by the participants in the study was pervasive and in their stories of being prostituted, not prosecuted, prostituted. The report found that on average, uh, or that the average age of those being trafficked was 14 years old. That's the average, meaning many are much younger than 14. One of the victims interviewed, who wished to remain anonymous for obvious reasons, explained that the same people that are charging you for prostitution are the people turning around and buying it from you. Well, hell, I guess at least they're paying for it, right? Uh, another part... Well, I'm, I'm sure that's not the case in most cases. Uh, anyway, another participant in the study noted that police would even help to acquire the young girl's drugs. The teenager was living in a drug house which had been busted by police, and after the raid, the officer told the girl, if you want pills, don't mess with this little kid. You call me. Kara Jabola Carolis with the Hawaii State Commission on the Status of Women explained that the abuse was extensive and on all levels of the spectrum. This ranged from cops asking for sexual favors to more coercive situations like, I'll let you go if you do X, Y, or Z for me, or all three, uh, bringing customers after hours uh, in exchange for cigarettes or gas money, she explained. When confronted with his information about the abuse of sex trafficking victims by police officers, Honolulu, Honolulu Police Chief Susan Ballard issued the following statement. I am deeply concerned and will continue to ask the Commission to provide additional information so that HPD can investigate. Oh, you're going to investigate yourself, are now you? Uh-huh. All right. We respect the participants' privacy and understand what they do will... Uh, w and understand why they do not want to be identified. However, if they can provide us with uh, when or where the activity occurred and the description of the officer... We will investigate to the fullest extent possible. HPD does not condone behavior described in a study under any circumstances. But, you know, we'll give these guys uh, some time off with, with pay. Oh, that's called vacation. Yeah, we'll give these guys a vacation and they'll come back after it cools down and, and everybody will just be fine because we're investigating ourselves and 
found ourselves not guilty. While the idea that police officers are abusing victims of sex trafficking may seem outlandish to some, certainly not to me, it should come as no surprise to those who've been paying attention, especially out of Hawaii. As the Free Thought Project previously reported in 2014, Honolulu police officers urged, urged lawmakers to keep an exemption in state law that allows undercover officers to have sex with prostitutes during investigations. For years, Hawaii allowed their cops to have sex with prostitutes and victims of human trafficking, while at the same time arresting these women. <sighs> you know, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about it. Uh, well, the idea, uh, uh, I mean, as, uh, the, it's not just Hawaii either. In Michigan, police were granted immunity from prosecution if they had sex with a prostitute or a sex trafficking victim during an investigation. This was legal for law enforcement all the way up until 2018 when lawmakers had to get a bill passed to specifically outlaw the practice of having sex with victims of human trafficking. Both the cops in Hawaii and Michigan put up huge resistance to the outlawing of sex with human trafficking victims. Imagine that. Claiming it was necessary to catch lawbreakers. Yeah, i got to screw some hookers because uh, that's how I'm going to catch the lawbreakers. Right. However, Bridget Carr, a director of human trafficking clinic at the University of Michigan Law School, explained how cops use these laws to further exploit their victims. What I do know from my own clients is that people who either say that cops who are cops or who are impersonating cops huh, know about this exemption and threaten my clients with it sometimes, she said. Police officers using their power to exploit human trafficking victims is a common thread among many, many cases. On multiple occasions, the Free Thought Project has reported interviews of former child sex trafficking victims who've all noted that they had nowhere to go as police and high-level po politicians all participated in the abuse. In case after case, the Free Thought Project reports on horrifying instances of child sex rings that were allowed to go on for decades because politicians, including heads of state, police, clergy, and others, were all in on this sick, sick game. It's no game. It's just sick. And there's just something wrong with these people. I... I I can't even... There's something wrong with these people. Why Why would... Oh, yeah, of course they all have dirt on each other, and one reports, they all... And that one gets back... Da, 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 da. But uh, usually those people wind up dead if they, they report on somebody uh, before the, the, anything is ever brought to, to court. So, uh, yeah. Ugh. Frustrating. Annoying. All right, now you y'all you're gonna have to help me out here on this one because uh, I I I I was unfa seven year old Tanner Markham. You be quiet. Damn video starting to play on me. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to help me out with this one because I was un unaware, unfamiliar with this thing. But but here it is. Uh, yesterday it was posted up here on the clap outlet CBS News by Sophie Lewis. Police issue warnings to parents after Momo challenge resurfaces. I had no idea there was such a thing as a Momo challenge or what a Momo was. And they have an editor's note here at the top. It says, this article features disturbing content and mentions of suicide. Police and schools are issuing warnings to parents on social media 
after a popular WhatsApp challenge has resurfaced in the UK. The Momo game, or Momo Challenge, gained international recognition last summer and was initially considered a hoax, quickly becoming a widespread crime. In August 2018, law enforcement investigated the influence of Momo on the death of 12-year-old in Argentina, uh, worrying parents globally to the potential real dangers of the challenge. When children participate in the challenge, they contact a stranger concealing themselves as Momo, using a creepy image and communicate primarily through Facebook-owned messaging app WhatsApp. Momo encourages participants to compete or complete various tasks if they want to avoid being cursed. Some of the tasks include self-harm, which Momo asked the participant, participant to provide photographic evidence in order to continue their game. Ultimately, the game ends with Momo telling participants to take their own life and record it for social media. Who would do this? I mean, how stupid are these kids? But whatever. Uh, a, a huge number of children are being exposed to suggestions about how to kill yourself. There is nothing funny about that. There's nothing cute about that. And it's extraordinarily harmful, Douglas Goldsmith, a licensed child psychologist, told CBS. The original image of Momo is a sculpture called Motherbird by Japanese artist, somebody I can't pronounce, which was on display in 2016 at the Vanilla G Gallery in Tokyo. There is no evidence that this person's company, Link Factory, was involved in the creation or execution of the Momo Challenge. Link Factory did not immediately respond to CBS. And why would you? Uh, let me put the picture of this thing up on the screen here. Because it's, uh, if, I, if I can get it up on there. Let's find it. Screen cap. All right, let me try and slide this over a little bit. Uh, what do I want to do here? Hey, hey, slide for me. It's not sliding. It's not doing what I want. All right. Nope, can't get her there. Well, you can kind of see the side of her face there. It's supposed to be a woman. Um, what do we got going on here? Oh, oh my, my. My broadcaster broke. Ah! Alright, the stream was here just a second ago. Hang on. Alright. All right, I gotta go back. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I'm not gonna really get that on there. I, I, I don't, I don't know why, but it's not letting me do what I want. Uh, it's not working like it, like it, like it ought to. Anyway, there it is. That's the uh, the Momo thing. Uh, fuck, fine, oh man, whatever. Um, anyway, so uh, it says here, like most memes, uh, the the Momo challenge seemingly disappeared soon after it went viral. But this week, parents across the UK are finding the game on WhatsApp as well as hidden within animated videos for children across social media. WhatsApp cares deeply about the safety of our users, so says WhatsApp. It's easy to block any phone uh, number, and we encourage users to report problematic messages. Uh, our advice, as always, is to supervise the games your kids play, but the games are supposed to be their babysitter and be extremely mindful of the videos they are watching on YouTube. Um, anyway, I, I, I don't know what the whole thing is, why a kid would go through and, and actually suicide themselves. It makes no sense to me. Um, 
<laughs> but, uh, you know, I guess that's kind of like Darwin going at work there, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's just some, there's something wrong with people. There's something seriously wrong. Hey, Donna! Donna Von Van Meter has joined us here in the chat. Hey, baby. <laughs> All right. <laughs> where was I? I forget where I was. Oh, man. It, 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 things throw me off when, when stuff doesn't work as I wanted it to. <sighs> All right. Oh, oh, well, that's not the one I wanted. Um, oh, this one is. I, I do believe this is also a Rob Works post earlier in the week. Uh, this was November twenty second, so it it could have been at any time, but I think it was posted in the chat this week. Oh, uh, no, no, November twenty second, twenty fifteen. I should mention. Uh, this article was posted, <laughs> but 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 uh, e either way, um, here's the story for you because I I love the story. Colorado juries keep letting people go for driving on weed. Prosecutors and cops are furious. <laughs> yeah, good for that. Yeah, it's too bad for them. Uh, Adams County, Colorado. Colorado prosecutors are getting frustrated at the jurors for daring to exercise rationality instead of blindly following the will of the state. A growing number of juries are acquitting people of driving under the influence of cannabis, even when tests show they are over the state's legal blood THC limit, which is ridiculous. The state's legal blood THC limit is ridiculously low. And that THC can remain in your blood for a long time without having any effect on you whatsoever. Anyway, since the recreational use of cannabis became legal, Colorado authorities are scrambling to apply rules and regulations. Gee, you think? Uh, to this new reality, they have established a 5 nanogram per milliliter of blood THC limit for operation of a motor vehicle. Based upon nothing. It's based on nothing. And it even says here in the article, which seems to be arbitrary, as there is no preponderance of data to support a specific number. It's just pulled out of their asses. we got to come up with a number. And so this is what we're going to use. Based on nothing. There's no tests that have been done. There, anything to show that, that that this is making somebody a worse driver. Actually, there have been tests done that show that, that smoking weed and driving makes you a better driver. <laughs> Indeed, the assumption that driving on weed poses the same risks as driving on alcohol would be a fallacy. In September, the... Uh, Free Thought Project reported on a novel study that found virtually zero driving impairment under the influence of cannabis, while alcohol caused complete impairment. Yeah, blacking out behind the wheels kind of complete impairment. <laughs> anyway, Brad Wood, not Brent Woods, Brad Wood, the form, foreman on the Bringer's jury, described the process that allowed them to come to this conclusion. The law allows you to infer that a person was impaired if they have over 5 nanograms per milliliter. But you may also feel free not to infer that, and in any case, use all the evidence to make your judgment. The application of logic and defiance of an arbitrary number... It's arbitrary. What are you defying? Number is driving prosecutors into a hissy fit. <laughs> You are putting lives in danger, said Tom Raines, head of the Colorado District Attorney's Council. I want the message to be understood. It's about driving while under the influence of drugs. Not recreation or medical. It's about being impaired while you drive. So saith the state. <laughs> Never mind that Bringinger and other defendants are convincing juries that they 
were not impaired, or that there was no authoritative data on blood THC levels and impairment, as there is with alcohol. Colorado residents just don't think that being over the legal limit for cannabis is the same as being over the legal limit for alcohol. And they're correct. They're absolutely right. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. So, hooray to the juries out there for, for not uh, pinning some kind of thing on these people when... They've done nothing wrong. And again, just bring out the studies that show that if you drive while high, you're going to be probably a better driver. Uh, probably it depends on what song's on the radio or, or, you know, whatever. Because, you know, you can definitely start getting into your tunes when you're high, uh, which could, could, could call the, you know, could cause uh, some distraction. <laughs> If you're driving down the road, you put you put on you, you put on Deep Purple, Highway Star, <laughs> crank it up. Uh, you know you, you you might you might <laughs> it might, it might might cause you to drive a little faster. <laughs> you be bopping along, having a good old time. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, all right. Damn deer ate my beans and tomatoes every year. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm planning on having a, a garden this year, and I have rabbits and skunks and other things that wander through my yard. So I, I'm kind of wondering how I'm going to manage that. But uh, I've, I've, I've I've researched various different things, and, and I'm thinking maybe one of those um, sonic things might might be the way to go. I, I'm not sure yet, but uh, we'll, we'll find out here. Anyway, we're going to do some more jams right here. For you all, this first one is a request by Vinny, maybe? I, I don't know, maybe Cowboy Tech. I forget, it was a while ago I posted this up here. So, uh, enjoy. Yeah! You tell him, Mojo, Mojo Nixon and Skid Roper there doing burn down the malls. Yeah, quite a, quite some great messages there in that video, that song. All right, before that we had for Mr. Cowboy Tech, Riders on the Storm by the Doors. Yes, excellent stuff. And we kicked it off with, I think that was a Vinny request, Wildwood Weed by Mr. Jim Stafford. <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> great stuff. You know, you know, if you like good music, this is the place to be. Right here on on, on the Freakers Ball on, on RealLibertyMedia.com. This is the place to be for those of you that like great music. Because uh, that's what we got. That's what we have here. And, uh... Hopefully you're, uh, you enjoy the stuff that I decide to play as I am the one selecting which particular tracks uh, should, be, should, should be played here on this show. Also on Sunday, on the blues, if you like the blues, then I like you. <laughs> Generally speaking, uh, that, 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 that's, not, that, that's not an absolute... <laughs> But if you like the blues, you're probably all right by me. <laughs> Just saying. Um, and and cyborg noodle, a bot, a bot, a a, 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 a a hybrid bot says, "This is IRC. Don't get butt hurt." I agree. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I really, uh, I, I really miss it when when Moose Girl's not here on the show with me. I, I'm sure I've mentioned that prior on uh, on other shows that I've done. Um, but whatever, uh, we'll save that for later. Okay, uh, let's do a little uh, health news. I guess it's health news. Hey, Vanna, Vanna's Vanna's. 
Venom's, Venom's throwing ducks. Let me kill it. All right, I got it. <laughs> All right, that's right. Vanna White, our new, our new, or the new name for uh, RLM Fluke. <laughs> All right. Uh, so from the website treehugger.com, treehugger, an organic diet rapidly reduces pesticide exposure. This posted on February 26th by Catherine. Martinko, I guess that's how you say your name. All right, so there you go. I mean, it, it's it doesn't that, that shouldn't be any anything people didn't just automatically realize, but still, that's the way it goes. Uh, when four American families switched to an all organic diet for a week, the results were dramatic. A new study has found that switching to an organic diet drastically reduced pesticides in the human body within six days. The peer-reviewed study published in Environmental Research looked at a broader range of pesticides, not just organophosphates, which are the most commonly studied. Uh, it, it, it attempts, it attempts, or it attempted, I guess, uh, to fill a knowledge gap regarding the effect of pyrethroids, py pyrethroids, and neo Neo, whatever, neonicotinoids, <laughs> the use of which is increasing worldwide. Four mixed race families participated in the study located in different parts of the United States, Baltimore, Atlanta, Oakland, and Minneapolis. Family members provided urine samples prior to the trial and then switched to an all-organic diet. Within six days, new urine samples revealed a significant drop in the amount of residual pesticides in their bodies. The biggest decrease was in organophosphates, a class of nerve agent pesticide, uh, from the executive summary. Uh, the metabolites for malocyon, MDA, and chloropyrifos, TCPY, decreased 95 and 61 percent respectively. These pesticides are, are known neurotoxins, and have been linked to autism, attention disorders, learning disabilities, and reduced IQ. They are so harmful that scientists called for a full ban. Of course, that didn't happen. The next most significant drop, 83%, was in the neonicotinoids. These are commonly found in baby foods associated with endocrine disruption, endocrine disruption, <laughs> I can almost talk, and linked to widespread pollinator and insect losses. Uh, pyrethroid pesticides decreased by half. These pesticides are associated with endocrine disruption, adverse neurodevelopment, immunological and reproductive effects, increased risk of Parkinson's disease, and damage to sperm DNA. Lastly, levels of 2,4-D, whatever that is, dropped by 37%. 2,4-D is one of the two ingredients in the notorious defoliant Agent Orange and is commonly used uh, in U.S. pesticides. Lovely. Eat that Agent Orange, my friends. It's an exciting discovery to make. We know that eating organic food improves health, but to see it have such a dramatic and rapid effect on health is encouraging. Study co-author Kendra Klein said in a press release that organic clearly works and everyone should have access to it. Farmers and farm workers growing our nation's food in rural communities they live in have a right not to be exposed to chemicals linked to cancer, autism, and infertility. And the way we grow our food should protect, not harm, the environment. We urgently need uh, our elected leaders to support our farmers in making healthy organic foods available for all. Uh, they got a video embedded here showing you the before and after the effects and such things like that. And I, and I, I personally would like to say that. See, I, I like apples. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the apple, and and but I know that almost all apples that you buy um, have pesticides on them. And so I, 
peel my apples. <laughs> I use a potato peeler before I eat an apple, and I and I skin every ounce, little tiny bit of skin off of that apple before I eat it. Now, probably there's some pesticides that seep through the skin, but the bulk of the pesticides and herbicides and whatever else is, is definitely on the skin of that apple. So I, I wash the apple down, and then I skin it, and then, and then I eat it. Because I'm still going to eat apples. You know, I like apples. I, I, can't, I can't help that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, in organic is a little more expensive, which really doesn't make any sense to me. Organic should be cheaper because you're, they're not wasting all that money on, on those poisons that they're, that, they're, that they're giving you. So um, if, you can, if you can afford and find organic, and you have to look at the little, little white kind of oval-shaped, football-shaped label that they stick on the various fruits and vegetables because those, the codes on there, tell you uh, what, what was applied to that, that particular piece of uh, produce. So um, I, I don't have the chart here that I can give you, but, but there is a chart that shows what all the codes mean on those things. And, and you can just print out a little one or, and take it with you. And maybe if you got like a, a, one of those phones that access the Internet, what do you call those? Smartphones. Um, you can use one of those. I don't have one of those, but yeah, you, you can do that. So you you definitely um, <laughs> and well then points out that people don't want organic corn on the cob because half of them have cornworm. Oh boy. <laughs> well, I know that the local farms here, uh, one of the local farms here in, in Moriarty, New Mexico, uh, they do grow organic corn and it's quite good, and it's it's not infested with cornworm. Uh, maybe it's the area. I, I don't know. Um, it, so, uh, but but if you know if you buy them from the from the big uh, grocery stores that are having it shipped from all over the country, see all the stuff at the local grocery store, Moriarty Foods, comes from local growers. All all the all the produce uh, and the beef as well. By the by the way, and the pork. Well, except for the the, the packaged bacon. Branded bacon and branded other, you know, processed meats. They 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 don't come from locally grown places. But uh, most most of the meat and produce that that is in my grocery store is produced locally, uh, and there's you know good and bad mixed in there. But uh, yeah, just just take a look at those labels and and you'll be all right. <laughs> Hopefully you'll be all right. Uh, I don't know. This. Something, something to, something to think about. All right. Oh, I should have covered this earlier when I was talking about cops and their nastiness, their terribleness, the rotten things. <laughs> Rome, Rome says, just don't look for the worms. You won't taste them. <laughs> and besides, once you boil the boil those ears of corn, they'll be cooked. It'll be like getting meat with your with your with your corn. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> All, right. All right. So here we are again from the freethoughtproject.com, uh, posted on January 25th, or February 25th, excuse me. Only out by a month. Cops say their fear allows them to trample the Fourth Amendment. And they apparently are afraid of everything. Because um, they they shoot at everything because they're afraid of everything. So, yeah. Anyway, in uh, Delaware, in the ostensible land of the free, police are required to obtain, cons obtain consent, a warrant, or have probable cause that a crime is being committed before they can search you or your property. This ostensible right is guaranteed under the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. How's that working out for you? However, police who swear an oath to uphold the Constitution, something they've never actually read, or if they did read, they didn't understand, routinely violate that oath and do so in the most egregious of ways. In the video that's in this article, uh, Delaware State Police are seen on video 
harassing an innocent black man, violating his rights by illegally searching his vehicle, and then sending him on his way as if he's supposed to accept that this is the way things are. When he asked why his rights are being violated and noted that he didn't consent to an illegal search, the cops told him that he doesn't have to consent if they are scared. Oh, I'm so scared. A disturbing notion, indeed. The man who posted the video went below uh, remains unnamed. He posted the video to YouTube to expose what he calls racial profiling. And his video is nothing short of infuriating. As the video shows, troopers were searching the man's vehicle as he started recording and questioned them about conducting a search without consent. As he films, you can hear one of the troopers say, No weapons! After one of the troopers comes up from the car, the man asks why they searched his vehicle without his consent, and the response was utterly ridiculous. You don't have to consent. I'm scared. You're suspicious. You have jersey tags, and you're in this area, says the rights-violating cop. After troopers finished violating the man's right, he asked troopers for their names and badge numbers, and a trooper can be heard saying, negative. And just like that, these officers had stopped an innocent man, trampled his rights, refused to identify themselves, and then left him, like some scene out of 1930s Germany. The man who posted the video wrote the following caption, asking if he should pursue a complaint against the cops in the video. I'm unsure... As of now, if I should pursue this, please inform me in the comment section below if this video is sufficient evidence to incriminate them. The video certainly shows a violation of this man's rights. However, police routinely violate the rights of innocent citizens and get away with it, even when it's captured on video. Uh, when asked if they are going to do anything about the officers in the video, Delaware State Police Public Information Officer Sergeant Richard Bratz gave the following statement. We are aware of the YouTube video. We are investigating the facts surrounding the incident. Information will be released when it becomes available. No other information has since been released in regards to this case. While police claim their fear allows them to violate the rights of innocent citizens, something has gone terribly wrong. Yeah, they're a bunch of chicken shit bastards is what they are. They are afraid of everything. At least they state they're afraid of everything as they go around blowing people away. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Rome's, Rome's is such a... Such a uh, <laughs> he, he, he loves all the stuff that 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 people here in the chat point out are terrible for you. He likes the GMOs. He likes the fast foods. <laughs> he, he likes it. All, if you say it's bad, Rome's is going to go eat a bunch of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gotta love the guy, man. <laughs> anyway, there's a video there. There's more in the article. Um, yeah, investigating themselves. Getting their story straight, as Rob says. Um, yeah, it's it's just a bunch of nonsense. They do whatever they want, and then they come up with a, a reason, uh, if if required, which generally it's not. But they they come up with an excuse as to why uh, they they uh, they've done these terrible things to you. Uh, all right. Now. I don't know that anybody here is this old, but maybe, and maybe you could just save this, put this in your in, in your notepad for for later on in life, um, and in case you ever find yourself in the situation uh, where where you might be thinking, okay, I don't I don't need to maintain a house any longer. I'm getting up there in years, and and I want to find myself a nice a nice place where somebody else will take care of all all that crap for me. And some people go into, uh, you know, like a nursing home 
elderly care, those those kind of things. But this elderly couple found out something quite useful. I would say quite useful. The elderly couple realizes Holiday Inn much cheaper by the day than a nursing home. <laughs> this is on uh, usahitman.com. So uh, Terry Robinson, like many others, is making sure his retirement plans are sorted out for when the time comes. But it's where he's considering living that has people talking. In his Facebook post that ha now has more than 77,000 shares, Robinson explains why he and his wife will be checking in to the Holiday Inn. According to his research, the average cost for a nursing home care is around $188 per day, whereas if he used his senior discount for the long-term stay at the hotel chain, he'd only have to pay $59.23 a day. Wow. He said, in turn, uh, that would leave him $128.77 a day for food, room service, laundry, gratuities, movies, whatever, hookers. Oh, he didn't say hookers. <laughs> he also pointed out that the Holiday Inn has locations all over the country. So if you get bored, you can always just go to another city. I think it's a terrific idea that, uh, I mean, people thinking about doing that kind of thing. What the hell? Uh, stay at the Holiday Inn rather than some nasty old nursing home. Uh, uh, to me, it's a great, it's a great concept, a great thought, a great idea. Good for you. And a good idea, in case you ever, like I said, if you ever get there, anybody here ever gets to the point where they they, they need to, uh, where they're no, they no longer care to, to keep up a house, um, that's just something for you to think about, you know. Just something to, like I said, put in that old notepad and save for later on. All right. Okay, since uh, we talked about the uh, organics and other poisons and nasty things, let's cover this one. Uh, this was posted on uh, 25th of February. So what was that, Monday? Yeah, last Monday. Monday. Uh, from OnTheGuardian.com. Monsanto judge, Monsanto, judge threatens to shut down cancer patient's lawyer. A judge in a Roundup Maker's first federal trial had banned discussion of the company's alleged manipulation of science. Manipulation of science. Lying. You know, the, the company's lies. Blatant lies. Not alleged. Uh, blatant lies. Anyway, Monsanto is facing its first federal trial over allegations that its Roundup weed killer can cause cancer. Does cause cancer. I mean, can. Um, <laughs> but, but a U.S. judge has blocked attorneys from discussing the corporation's al alleged manipulation of science. Alleged manipulation. Lies! In an extraordinary move in a packed San Francisco courtroom on Monday, U.S. Judge Vince Chababara, uh, uh, whatever, uh, threatened to sanction and shut down a cancer patient's attorney for violating his ban on talking about Monsanto's influence on government regulators and cancer research. You've compl completely disregarded the limitations that were set upon you, the visibly angry judge said to a attorney Amy Wagstaff, threatening to prevent her from continuing. If you cross the line one more time, your opening statement will be over. If I see a single inappropriate thing on those slides, I'm shutting you down. <laughs> the usual conflict in a federal courtroom, unusual conflict, it should be a usual, but it's unusual conflict in a federal courtroom, has fueled concerns among Monsanto's critics that the trial may be unfairly stacked against the plaintiff. Yeah, think? Edward Hardiman, a 70-year-old Santa Rosa man, who alleges that his exposure to Roundup over several decades caused his cancer. Building on the long-standing allegations, 
Hardiman's lawyers and other critics have argued that Monsanto has, for years, suppressed negative studies and worked to promote and ghostwrite favorable studies about its herbicide to influence the public and regulators. In a blow to the plaintiffs, Chichibara, uh this year approved Monsanto's request to prohibit Hardiman's attorneys from raising allegations about the corporation's conduct, saying issues about its influence on science and government were a significant distraction. <laughs> that means jurors uh, must narrowly consider the studies surrounding Roundup's cancer risks. And if they rule Monsanto caused Hardiman's illness, then in a second phase, the jury would learn about the company's conduct when assessing liability and punitive damages. Hardiman's trial is considered a bellwether case for hundreds of other federal plaintiffs who have made similar claims, meaning its outcome could have a significant impact on the course of future litigation and potential statement settlements. The high-stakes case comes amid growing global scrutiny of health impacts of glyphosate, and uh, which is sold under the Roundup brand. <sighs> Concerns about the product escalated last August after a California jury issued a historic verdict saying Monsanto was liable for terminally ill man's cancer and owed him $289 million dollars in damages. The groundbreaking ruling against Monsanto set the stage for a new wave of cancer litigation in the U.S. and sparked regulatory debates and campaigns to restrict the chemical across the globe. Monsanto is now owned by Krauts, I mean uh, a German pharmaceutical company, Bayer, which suffered a 30% share drop after the verdict, it is now facing more than 9,000 similar lawsuits across the country. Anyway, I'll let you read the rest of this. It goes on for quite a while. Uh, you, you get the drift of this here. You get the point. And um, uh, Monsanto, Bear, whatever you want to call them, these are evil, these are evil bastards. Um, and uh, they, they know their shit kills people. And they just don't care. Because it makes them a buttload of money. So, there you go. There you go. Elton John Holiday Inn. You should, you should, have, you should have requested the Dead Kennedys. Holiday Inn, Cambodia. <laughs> Instead of Elton John. You'd have had a much better chance of getting that one played. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, man. We do have one of your one of your tracks, Hansel, in this set, though. So, uh, yeah, this set that I'm going to play right now for you. So, in that joy, this is not your request, but uh, one one of the tracks in this set is. So here you go, enjoy. Very nice, very nice there. The Almond Brothers Band, ABB, if you want, with One Way Out. Uh, that's, that's an excellent, it's a Hansel request, by the way. Judge Dredd, J. Dredd here in the chat, he requested that song, which I, I, I'm impressed. He likes some good music. Uh, that that song, One Way Out, that, that's up there in my, in my top ten favorite songs, uh, especially in the, the ones that are the more popular type. Uh, you know, up there with uh, Free Bird or Stairway to Heaven or uh, so, some of the others that are just just great epic songs like that. Now, if you, if you uh, like that song and you, you like that, look up on the YouTube there at some point in time. Uh, a, a couple of guys called the Nimmo Brothers. They're a couple of brothers out of Scotland, and uh, they they did a gig at the uh, Blues Moose Cafe over there in uh, Netherlands, and uh, they they played that song, and man, they just tear it up uh but uh yeah yeah tough to beat the the original band on that anyway before that we had iron maiden and ken i play with madness 
And uh, most certainly you can. Uh, I, I, I would suggest that uh, everybody should, from time to time, play with madness. Anyway, we kicked it off with uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan in Double Trouble doing Change It, as a Sock Puppet pointed out in the chat, an old uh, Doyle Bramall song. Uh, I, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, good stuff, man. Yeah, the Freakers Ball. Uh, uh, and well then there in, in, the, in the chat says, you can't believe that we're still up and kicking it this late, but every... Friday night for the last, oh, 10 years, I guess. Well, not everyone. Not, not I mean, there, there, there have been a couple of misses. A couple misses in 10 years that we didn't do a, the, the, the show. But, um, and it did start off as a longer show uh, with no particular cutoff time. And at some point I instituted, uh, uh, which is a midnight my time, 2 p.m. Eastern time, uh, cut off, making it a three-hour show instead of a four or five-hour show. <laughs> so, yeah, we've been doing this for a long time, every Friday night, man. It's uh, it, it, it's uh, it's just great stuff, uh, fun fun for us, and and um, I, I I don't don't uh, don't quote me or hold me hold me to this, but I would say it's the cornerstone of Real Liberty Media. Uh, this this would be the the show that holds everything together. <laughs> and as you, as you notice, even Grammy uh, Grammy Mary, she she calls you know it, it's a, it's a Freaker Friday, and a lot of people call it Freaker Friday now because it's always that way. And actually, before Freakers started, um, uh, we we were I, well, I I myself before Moose Girl joined in was doing the flagship show. I like that. Thank you there, Rob. Uh, uh, before Freaker started, I started off with another program, uh, basically the same thing, um, and it was just called The Weekend Kickoff with Grimner. And uh, and, and that, that fed, and Moose Girl wanted to join in, and I said, all right, I, I would love to have you. Um, uh, because, yeah, yeah, uh, we, we, uh, we could certainly use you here with us. Um, so uh yeah, so it's been going on for a long time. And uh and it's just fun. It's just fun. I, I enjoy doing it. And uh, you know, set up, set, set up the request system and uh Yeah, whatever, man. All right, what do we got here? Four, eight, eleven. All right. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just counting uh I I gotta track time at, at when it gets to this point in the show. <laughs> And I'm not real good at that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that'll be, we'll just call it 15. All right. <laughs> Top of the marquee. All right. Get in there. Get in there. All right. Close all that. Close all that. Shut that down. All right. Freakers. Yeah. All right, man. <laughs> Let's see what kind of stories we got left here for you. In the time allotted. Um, okay. This is a semi-important story for you techies out there. From the hackernews.com, uh, February 27, uh, the, the Wednesday. New flaws re enable DMA attacks on a wide range of modern computers. Uh, yeah. And and they point out that yeah it's Windows Linux Mac it don't matter because it's not going after the OS not directly it's going after the hardware and that's that's where the problem is uh, and, and if you plug in one of these devices uh, USB uh, C port or Thunderbolt three port um, uh, these things can absolutely directly attack your your machine your system and uh, do some very terrible things for you or to you, against you. Uh, so here it is. Security researchers have discovered a new class of security vulnerabilities that impacts all major operating systems, including Windows, Mac, Linux, FreeBSD, allowing attackers to bypass protection 
uh, mechanisms introduced to defend against the DMA attacks because the protections are at the software level, not the hardware level. Uh, known for years, direct memory access uh, based attacks, DMA attacks, let an attacker compromise a targeted computer in a matter of seconds by plugging in a malicious hot plug device such as an inter external network card, uh, mouse, keyboard, printer, storage, graphics card, into the Thunderbolt 3 port or the latest USB-C port. Now, we all know that you could plug something in to the USB port that you can use to uh, gain access over the entire system, the entire machine. The DMA-based uh, attacks are possible because Thunderbolt, board, Thunderbolt port allows connected peripherals to bypass operating system security policies and directly read-write system memory that contains sensitive information, including your passwords, banking logins, private files, and browser activity. That means simply plugging in an infected device created using tools like interception uh, can manipulate the contents of the memory and execute arbitrary code not really arbitrary, directed code, um, with much higher privileges than regular universal serial bus peripherals, allowing attackers to bypass the lock screen or control PCs remotely. So you could be buying one of these things and, and plug it in and have no idea that this new device you bought is, is uh, infected. To block DMA-based attacks, most operating systems and device leverage input-output memory management unit protection uh, technique to control the, which peripheral device, usually legitimate, can access memory and which region of the memory. Now, a team of cybersecurity researchers from the University of Cambridge, Rice University, and SRI International has unveiled a set of new vulnerabilities in major operating systems that could that would, that can, that will allow attackers to bypass the IMO, IOMMU protection. By mimicking the functionality of a legitimate peripheral device, the attacker can trick targeted operating systems into granting it access to sensitive regions of memory. And again, all you got to do is plug the motherfucker in, and, um, and it's too late. It's, it's too late at that point. So uh, just uh, bear that in mind and make sure you buy your devices from a reputable source, whatever that means. Uh, <laughs> anyway, they got uh, some uh, photos and such in here and charts showing you different various things that you may want to take a look at and some technical information. Um, <laughs> what? You guys doing down here? I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's see what else I got here for you. <laughs> oh, and as we were talking earlier about the uh, Monsanto bullshit and organic stuff and other things such as that, here from the mindunleashed dot com. For those of you that like to drink alcohol, beer, or wine, even the organic versions of beer and wine, toxic weed killer found in almost all beer and wine brands, including those organics. Most of the food that we eat makes a long and tortuous journey to our tables, often over great distances from unknown origins. Whether it's factory farmed eggs, processed chicken, fresh fruit from the West Coast, seafood from the East Coast, or a glass of wine or a nice cold beer, we often assume that what we're eating is generally healthy or at least won't harm us if enjoyed in moderation. However, a new report by the public interest watchdog USPIRG has revealed that most of the top beers and wines in the United States are contaminated with glyphosate and the main in, uh, which is the main ingredient in Monsanto's weed killer Roundup. Roundup is a controversial herbicide? No, it's poison. And it's 
in your food. <laughs> I don't know how controversial that is. Uh, that has been linked to cancer and other health problems in studies by the WHO. The WHO, not the rock group, as Cal says. And the state of California. Among others in recent years, thousands of people have blamed Monsanto, quite rightfully so, for being a key contributor to their cancer, leading to calls across the world for the weed killer to be banned. The advocacy group tested five wines and 15 beers. The beer brands included top sellers Budweiser, Coors, Miller Lite, Sam Adams, and Samuel Smith Organic, and New Belgium, and New Belgium. Wine brands tested include Behringer, Barefoot, and Sutter Home. Uh, out of the 20 brands tested, glyphosate was found in 19 of them, including three out of four organic beers and wines. Among the beverages with the highest concentration of glyphosate was uh, 2018 Sutter Home Merlot at 51.4 parts per billion. In Sing Tao beer uh, from China with 49.7 parts per billion, a rather high level when compared with the U.S. beer with the largest amount, which was Coors Light piss, <laughs> piss in a can at 31.1 parts per billion. Uh, the organic beverages like 2016 in Inkari Malbec lagged behind at 5.3 parts per billion, while the 2017 Samuel Smith Lager had 5.7 parts per billion. In a statement, Organic Winery Frey Vineyards noted that while it refrains from the use of both herbicides and pesticides, glyphosate in trace amounts is now found in rainwater because of its application to conventionally farmed agricultural land in rainwater. <laughs> oh, glyphosate uh, in trace amounts can be found in many food products, almost all food products, uh, uh, whether that be uh, meat or produce, anyway. Um, wait, hey, wait, what else is there? Yeah. Um <laughs> So, yeah, so, yeah. So there's that. And and Rob, not being a fan of the beer, says, as if it's not all piss. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> all right. Maybe I can sneak one more story in here before I head on to this last set. Um, <laughs> I don't know what. Uh, oh, yeah, let's do this one. A little mystery. A little mystery story, also from the Mind Unleashed, posted on, on February 25th. I, I, I'm not sure how this happened either, but here it is. No one knows how a 10-ton whale ended up deep in the Amazon jungle. Huh? Scientists are baffled by the recent discovery of a 10-ton humpback whale found dead deep within the Amazon jungle of Brazil. The massive whale was found on the island of Marajo, Marajo, maybe, I don't know, which is located at the mouth of the Amazon River. Some researchers suggest the whale was thrown on shore. It's 10 tons during a storm. But this explanation would take a number of odd circumstances, considering that these type of creatures rarely swim close to the coast, the whale was found so far inland that it would have required a hurricane force winds to carry something so heavy for so long. The whale would have had to have been picked up very high into the air to be hurled over so many tall trees. <laughs> Local officials say other animals began flocking to the huge carcass of the mammal, which tipped them off that something wasn't quite right on that island. Marine specialists working at Bicho de Agua Institute, a con conservation organization based in Marajo, Marajo, have been studying the site and the whale to determine what happened. Uh, good luck with that. Unless you saw it come in and land, uh, I don't think you're going to really figure that out. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but that's a kind of a little mystery, mystery thing going on or that went on there. So there you go with that. Now we got to hit our last set here. So, uh, yeah, all right, <laughs> where's my, where's my damn thing here, <laughs> all right, 
All right. So if you're going to retire sometime and you want to check out a Holiday Inn, you probably don't want to use the one in Cambodia. Alrighty, folks, that was Christopher Amoroso with his version of Blackberry. Just great stuff. Uh, anyway, before that, we had Cream at Tales of Brave Ulysses, uh, a, a new release for Monroe's Retro. Not a new song, obviously, 1967. But, uh, yeah, uh, Monroe just put that out today. So, uh, excellent, excellent there. Let me, let me give him a thumbs up. On his video, uh, I, I, I dig so many of his, his, his the videos he makes. Before that, a Hansel request, Barry McGuire, uh, Eve of Destruction. So uh, excellent there, excellent. Yes, yeah, yeah, you gotta dig it. And uh, all we kicked it off with another Hansel request, the Dead Kennedys Holiday in Cambodia. So uh, yeah, that's gonna wrap it up here. Um, tomorrow, 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 weekend, weekend, weekend. I guess today for most of y'all, not quite today for me. I got another 30 seconds. Uh, but <laughs> tomorrow you get uh, Flash and possibly Vinny on the dark table at noon Eastern. I'll be on at noon Eastern on uh, Sunday playing the blues here, playing the trivia here. Yep, having a good old time in the chat and playing the music. Oh, just such fun. So uh, don't miss that. You gotta, if you like the blues, if you like trivia, can't go wrong. Uh, following me, immediately following me at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon o'clock Pacific, is Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up a big old can o' whoop-ass. Uh, I will be back on Monday evening, once again, at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, with Grim Leftovers, covering the stories I didn't get to on the freaking ball. Imagine that. And, <laughs> and then Tuesday is, again, uh, Flash Somebody. With, again, possibly Vinny sharing in there on his show, In a Perfect World. Uh, Grammy is on at, with her rocket chair on Wednesday and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Flash is on at do, 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 uh, 6 p.m. Eastern on Thursday uh, with 20% off. Such a deal. Uh, and that's it. That's it. That's going to wrap it up. Thank you all for tuning in, being here in the chat, being part of Real Liberty Media. Love y'all. Have a great weekend. Peace.